Freaking at the Freakers Ball, y'all. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. It's a uh, November 13th, 2020. Friday the 13th. Yeah, that's right. Oh, uh, my, my microphone seems a loud, little loud. Is my microphone a little loud to you guys down there? Out there? All right. It looks like it's, I'm, I'm up a little higher than normal uh, here on the microphone. So if anybody say. Uh, has a has a has a word on that? Let me know. Anyway, welcome, folks. It's Friday night here, November thirteenth, two thousand twenty. Yeah, we're still in this freaking year, man. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, welcome to it. Uh, welcome to the rest of it. I, I I don't even know what to say about all this crazy stuff. Yeah, it's Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me let me adjust that mic down a little bit. I I'm, I'm seeing some levels that are up beyond where I think they ought to be. Uh, about I'll take it down about three dB. That should be right. All right, there we go. That looks good. <laughs> All right. So, well, I didn't say it wasn't going to be clear, cowboy. Just louder on my recording than I was I was uh, I was expecting it to be. Sitting up there like that. Hey, moose. Hey. Hey. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm um, okay. Okay, that's a good. That's a good answer. That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not great, dude. No. Nope. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. Anyway, welcome to everybody on RealLibertyMedia.com, dot com, uh, RLMRadio dot X Y Z, RealLiberty dot org, and uh, wherever else you may be tuned in from out there. Uh, if you're on uh, the uh, uh, video, uh, you could also be on Vaughn.live slash Real Liberty Media there for that. So uh, welcome to those of you that may be tuned on that side, which I yeah. couldn't tell you. Uh, but if you're out there, hi. Oh. <laughs> it's Friday the 13th, so yay. Yeah, yeah, it is Friday the 13th. It's not a full moon Friday the 13th. No, no. As we have experienced in the past. but uh, We have. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. It's all right. So. Yeah. Yeah, what a day, what a week, what a year. What Tell a holy, what the holy hell's going on? <laughs> oh, it's just been such a blast, hasn't it? Oh, uh, and it's getting blastier as we go. Yeah, it's going to get better. Oh, let me tell you. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I was listening to the governor, mm -hmm. the gov, uh, here in uh, New Mexico earlier today. The Fuhrer. The Fuhrer. The Fuhrer, the the Fuhrer, Fuhrer of New Mexico. Uh, and uh, Michelle Lujan Grisham, or as she's known here, the notorious MLG, um, <laughs> talking about all of the new, really fascistic uh, measures she's mm -hmm. putting into place to uh, saying that this is a life or death, death situation. We are, this is, this is out of control. And it's not. There's nothing. There's nothing going on. But uh, I think maybe uh, some of this that she's doing, uh, she is probably, and I feel bad for you guys already, but probably if Biden does get the selection and in mm -hmm. his favor, she will wind up in his cabinet somewhere. So that's a good thing. She'll leave New Mexico, but she'll crap on everybody else out there in the nation, and if they make her, like, in charge of the lockdowns, look out! <laughs> because, because yeah. she, she... Right? Yeah, yeah, she's yep. freaking horrible. So, um, anyway, she's angling for a position, and uh, she was already vetted before for uh, the, oh, VP, okay. the VP thing. Mm -hmm. so, so she's definitely, uh, probably, definitely, probably going to wind up out there with him okay. if he if he gets selected. Like so. you said, good news for New Mexico, bad news for everyone. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so great. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And, and, great. and so so she she rolls this out today. Okay. Uh well we we're, we're gonna we're gonna lock down uh well well what we did back in March for, for two more weeks, except we're going further and shutting down this, that. I mean it's like what there's a few few businesses that haven't gone out of business yet, so you got to 
go out and shut them down. Yep. Um, and, yep. and so Finish by, them off. By, by saying today that on month, starting one Monday, it'll be two mm-hmm. weeks from then, that, uh, which okay. two, two weeks, then, of course, we'll reevaluate, uh, which means expect it to go at least through the end of the year. Um, but uh, so, uh, so saying that two weeks, that means no Thanksgivings, uh, and she put a maximum of five people in any household, uh, and, and less, yeah. uh, and less more than five people live there. Uh, you know, if you got a, if you got a, a, a family of seven or eight, they're not going to kick the family out of the house. Well, oh, thanks, that's good. thanks for that. Uh, but also, the day after Thanksgiving is the yeah. biggest, biggest business day for brick and mortar retail businesses uh, of the year. Mm-hmm. So that's fucked. That that's done. Yeah, <laughs> there'll, there'll be none of that. Pretty bad. Except except if you have a big box store, you'll be all right. Except yep. for except for the fact that you can only have seventy five customers in the big box stores at a time. Uh, they they were saying twenty five percent, but some of those places hold a couple thousand people. So no more of that. No more. You can't have three four hundred people in the store and still be under your twenty five percent. No more than seventy five customers in the store at a time. <laughs> so so uh the big box stores are escaping most of this nonsense, but not all of it. Uh but but all all the small retailers are done. Uh oh yeah. Yeah, you know, if you're like yeah. a, if you have a small computer store, electronic store, uh vacuum cleaner store, whatever. Uh th- those kind of furniture store, you're finished. You're you're done. Um so you guys will be out of business before this governor's out of here. Um, <laughs> oh my God! Oh. Uh, and and as far as as far as <sighs> restaurants restaurants go, mm-hmm. she is allowing them to still do curbside pickup. Oh, oh Cur- okay. Cur- curbside pickup. No indoor di- indoor dining is finished again. Yeah. It was here. I mean, it was gone. Then it was here, and then it was gone again. Then it was here, and now it's gone again. So I, I don't even know how you run a business like that, where you never you know, where you never know day to day what what right. what what you're going to be allowed to do. Uh, 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 yeah, it's it's insanity. So, um. <laughs> I mean, happy 2020. <laughs> so Evers is trying to do the same thing as Minnesota, right? Yeah. Like lock it down. Right. And he keeps get, keeps getting shut, shot down by the Supreme Court in Wisconsin. And so, um, but Walls, Governor Walls of Minnesota, he's getting all this shit passed. So starting tonight, I mean, okay, bars and restaurants have to be closed by 10 p.m. As if closing at 10 p.m., because 10 must be the worst time yeah, the vi- for coronavirus. It, it, it's so arbitrary. It makes no sense at all. Okay. Right. Well, at least why even allow them to be open if it's so terrible? The ten o'clock thing is just dumb. Right. Well, I I I, I guess that uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know. Not the but, bars don't. Yeah. Yeah. You know, a lot of bars in bigger cities they stay open. They serve food uh, till well, midnight. Well, they had the, they had the bars here all shut down. Unless unless they were serving food, which meant that they were a restaurant technically. So some restaurants do stay open twenty four hours. Perkins is open twenty four fucking hours. Yeah, what about hours? like like Denny's or something? You know, I don't know. Yeah, they're... Denny's is open twenty four hours. Yeah. So. I mean. Uh, it's... Anyway. And then like, <laughs> they did the same thing in the beginning of this shit. Walmart cut their hours. All these rest businesses cut their hours. Yeah, yeah, to yeah. To limit the exposure. Right, but then that went back. They like, then they went back to more hours again, and they actually they put the plexiglass in, and the arrows and the shit on the floor. You know, but oh, it's it, crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. So I don't know what's yeah. It. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not feeling too optimistic. Well, do you remember some time ago, it might have been a March or April, somewhere around there, mm-hmm. um, I told you that uh, on here on the show that uh, they I went on the like the New Mexico Gov Health site, whatever, and they, and yeah. they, had, they had a tab on there 
if you needed a mask, go there and, and click that, and they'd, they'd send you oh, a okay. mask. Mm-hmm. It came in last week. <laughs> so four or five months down the line. <laughs> you got your mask finally, huh? Yeah. I was like, they, 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 just, they just, you know, said, screw that, we're not sending any out. But they did. They they said one. And I was just like, okay, so all this time you've been preaching all this mass crap. But but as far as you supplying them as you say you do on your site there, nothing. And then all of a sudden, here it is. I was like, really? (laughs) How ridiculous. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Wow. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. Oh. Cloud Kitchen, I don't know what the fuck yeah, that yeah, is. Jeremy, I haven't been yeah. out in months. I haven't been to any con. Well, there hasn't been anything going on. Everything's been shut down. So you, I haven't been anywhere for months. <laughs> Besides the grocery store. Right. That's well, it. And the gas station. I'll tell that you, is I'll, it. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what. You're not going to be going anywhere. Yeah, probably not. Especially if you want to go to a concert. Right. And you got to get a ticket from Ticketmaster. Mm-hmm. Because unless you have been vaccinated and can prove right. it. <laughs> and prove that you have tested negative. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. I got I got an article on that. I'll talk, okay. I'll, we'll talk about yeah, that Yeah, I story. saw that. Yeah. We'll talk about that story later. I will read that, uh, uh, Rob. Um, but... Not right this moment, because right this moment we're going to kick off some jams here. Yep. And we're going to we're going to have everybody sing along. Y'all know the song, the first song here, and uh, and and it's an uplifting kind of tune that can make you all feel better, as music does. Oh, did I? Did I might have might have needed to adjust this. No, I think it's all right. Okay, I had, yeah, accidentally moved my browser to a different position. And so when I do that, sometimes I have to readjust my portal. (laughs) Anyway, sing along. If you know the words, you know the words. Here you go. Yeah, a little green day there for y'all. All All right, that's some good stuff. Uh, There's an American idiot uh, live in Berlin back in uh, 2005. Oh boy, those guys could, uh, they, they tell a good story in that song. Uh, before that, we had the Dead South in, in hell. I'll be in good company. Uh, you can bet your ass on that, and there's gonna be a lot of folk down there. Uh, and uh, we kicked it off there with Creedence Clear Water Revival. Long as I can see the light. Long as I can see the light! Yes, indeed. So, uh, welcome, uh, new folks there to the chat, Jeremiah and Jin Me. Uh, yes, welcome. Yeah, there's JJ. There's JJ Jeopardy. from St. Louis. Yeah. How, JJ. Hey, JJ. How you okay, doing? Okay, um, so, remember I said about Minnesota? What about Minnesota? Going out draconian. Yeah. Locking down. Locking down. Uh, Monday. Stop oh, that. Monday. In Minnesota. Okay. They're going to roll out a texting system for COVID-19 contact tracing. <laughs> okay. To encourage people to answer their calls, contact tracers will now text first. Okay. So it says these tracers spend most of their days making phone calls to people who have either who either have COVID-19 or may have been closely exposed to the virus. The heck is that? No. Oh. Uh, dang thing started on me. Okay. Um, if you're like most people, you won't answer the call if you don't recognize the number. So, and sometimes they have to call two, three, four, five times before they get them to answer. So anyway, um, they are rolling out a texting program to improve the contact tracing responses and the text messages. Why is this cut off? I cannot see this. I don't know. It says answer the call um, and give you a phone number and look out for it. And they don't ask for financial information. But anyway, they're rolling this out in Minnesota. Oh, and okay. I'm, what? I said okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. 
So, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What I was saying is that Evers wants to do the same thing here in Wisconsin, but it keeps getting shot down by the Supreme Court. That's good. But if you have Biden now, he wants a national lockdown. He wants a national mask mandate. Sure. So we're pretty much fucking screwed, dude. I would say so. You I mean, a, really. You have, you have a link. You have a link for that. Oh yeah. Hang on a second. Back there. Oh man. Oh shoot. See now the video started for me. <laughs> yeah, we're just at a thousand here, Graham. At least a thousand. Yeah. So I mean, we were warned though by Biden actually in the one debate that we're going to be having what he called a dark winter. Right. That's scary. <laughs> it is. It is very scary. What does that mean? Uh, do you think? Uh, well, pff, who knows? Coming from him, it could have been anything. I mean, the guy's freaking lunatic. Uh, he, he doesn't know what he's saying or how he's saying it or any any of that kind of stuff. Um, oh, by the way, here's the link to that uh, those executive orders, health orders, whatever you want to call them, mandates what? from New Mexico. New Mexico? Yeah. So uh, and and you can see they they keep on bumping up this crap and rolling it out there. Right, right. Uh, and, and I mean, it, all the Democrat states want to do this for sure. But with Biden now saying national lockdown, I mean, they say it's about the virus, but when you do this harm to these businesses and you basically put them out of business by doing this. Right. I mean, you're, you're messing with people's livelihoods and their lives and it's just not right, dude. It's, it's just, I, I can't imagine having a, being the owner of a restaurant right now. Uh, no, you no, know? no, not, not at all. Not at all. Because you, Anyway, if, you if can't you, be open. You can be open, but only 25% capacity. Well, I'm sorry. You cannot survive on that. Uh, if you look at the insanity in this PDF here, this is the mm -hmm. one that came out today uh, talking about what, what people are allowed to do, how much of it they're allowed to do, how, how right. long of, in the day they're allowed to do it. Wow, uh, that's a long well, one, dude. Oh, fuck, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah, it tells you what, what, what they consider essential and what they can, don't consider essential and... <laughs> Who they're going to shut down, and uh, basically, these are the people we're going to screw. Um. <laughs> right. Oh. Yeah, well, outside doesn't work in Wisconsin, JJ, or uh, Minnesota. Uh, even, even that, even outside. Even with a heated tent, it, it would, it's not feasible. Yeah. 30 below it gets here, you know. I mean, it gets freaking cold. You can't have an outdoor restaurant in 30 freaking below weather. And it's just, <laughs> no. No, you cannot. It's just no. ridiculous. Right. All right, look. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, this is all over. And, I mean, the election was a freaking sham. Okay? Oh, it's, 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 it's a mess. It's, 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 it's a mess. It, it was it, a sham. It, it was a mess. It, 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 was, it was all planned ahead of time to be this kind right. of crap. Right. To be a big clusterfuck. Yep, yep. And we we and talked it, about yep. it plenty before. We did. You know, we, we talked we, about it. We knew yep. this bullshit was coming, and we, uh, did. we knew it was going to stretch out a long time, and and they were going to do their best to steal it away, and and and, and you know, uh, basically, you know, they, they use all the neuro linguistic programming whenever they talk about yep. Trump. The Trump and his baseless claims with no evidence, and it's like, well, there's ton, tons of base and there's tons of claim, yeah. um, evidence for all this, but but that's all you hear or read uh, whenever you read anything about the election. Uh, why does he just give up? <laughs> just like, <laughs> right. Oh, what a mess! What a mess! I uh, it's it's. All right, let me read this little thing that. Okay. Uh, yep. That uh, Rob Works posted from law.cornell.edu. Okay. It's 3 U.S. Code 5, Determination of Controversy as to Appointment of Electors. 
So it says, if any state shall have provided by laws enacted prior to the day fixed for the appointment of the electors for its final determination of any controversy or contest concerning the appointment of all or any of the electors of such state by judicial or other means, uh, other methods or procedures, <laughs> and such electors or in such determination shall uh, shall have been made at least six days before the time fixed for the meeting of the electors, such determination made pursuant to such law so existing on said day and made at least six days prior to said time of meeting of the electors shall be conclusive and shall govern in the counting of the electoral votes as provided in the Constitution as in hereafter regulated so far as the ascertainment of the electors appointed by the by such state is concerned. Uh, what? <laughs> uh, I, it's, it's, a, it's a bunch of frickin' twisted legalese that I, I, I assume that gives them leeway to say, well, you may have won uh, enough electoral votes uh, after your challenges and recounts and all that stuff, but we get to appoint uh -huh. whatever we get to appoint whatever electors we want. Guess which ones are picking? <laughs> uh, yeah, I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. Jeez. Oh, I know. It gets and, 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 and when it gets down to it, which I think it's December 9th mm -hmm. is when they're supposed to meet, the electors are supposed to meet. Um, uh, I think it was the 14th, but I've heard. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. I, I thought it was nice. It doesn't matter. Um, yeah, okay. Either, either way, when, when it gets down to the six days prior, as we have here, just as you saw with the election, um, <laughs> instead of saying, well, we had six days, but some of these electors won't be appointed until at least like one day before, and and we're going to be okay with that. Some of them will actually be appointed after the electors have already started to meet if some of those electors aren't going to go along with what we want. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, they've, yep. got, they've, got, they've got all kinds of methodologies here yeah, on, they do. on how to screw people over. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, or how to just, to, to, you know, finish their, their stealing of the election. Um. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. This is yeah, they did. They did it illegally. A lot of stuff was done illegally. Highly illegally. Yeah, it, I mean, absolutely illegally. Um, there, there, there's it, it's unimaginable the level of illegality, unconstitutionality. However you want yeah. to put it, however you want to look at it. Fraud. Uh, fraud. Corruption. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Election fraud, election rigging. Um, JJ's pointing you know, out here uh, yeah. the, the 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 states that changed the voting did it without going to the legislature, which by law they have to do. So they did it illegally without an executive mm -hmm. order through the state. Woo! <laughs> Yay! Oh, it's 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 going to be more fun than than uh, you can even imagine. Um, but I think, uh, and, and probably maybe some of the uh, uh, some of these new lockdown stuff coming up is to prevent people from going out and protesting the, the election fraud. That didn't stop them all summer long. No, well, that was different. That was their. Why protest. was that different? That those that that was their protesters. That was the the, the anti frauds or the anti flats or whatever they are, uh, oh and, and the God. BLMs. Those guys are okay because. Uh, the virus knows not to go near them, but okay. if, but, but if you're a, a conservative and you're out there protesting, <laughs> then the virus is coming right for you. You're a super spreader. That's right. Well, yeah, uh, uh, but 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 Jin Jin Me, yeah, the 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 the, the liberal socialist communist protesters don't get COVID, but yeah, no, but 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 the, but the conservative ones do. Um. <laughs> All right. So th this is what I was talking about earlier on okay. the uh, on the uh, Ticketmaster thing here. This is posted up on Technocracy dot news. It begins. Ticketmaster to check vaccination status of concert goers. 
So, um, <laughs> <laughs> wonderful. Uh, note from the oh, editor. Fuck Ticketmaster. <laughs> Sorry, I know, but I know, I know, they're I know. bastards. I know. I, a note from the uh, editor here. Humans typically discriminate based on the color of their skin, but that is child's play compared to <laughs> discrimination based on an unseen virus that cannot be reliably detected. This is going to rip the fabric of society in every corner of the world. Thank you, editor. So, <laughs> yeah, he's right. Uh, Ticketmaster is making plans for how they will handle the post-coronavirus world uh, once concerts start back up. And their plans so far sound like something from a dystopian horror film. So far, the corporation is floating the idea of using digital tickets that will show whether or not they ha that the holder has had a vaccine or if they have recently tested negative. To get around the HIPAA laws, which is a medical law to prevent uh, revealing your medical information to anybody other than your doctor, um, to get around the HIPAA laws, the concert goer's medical information will be stored with a third-party healthcare provider. Oh, you can trust the third party. Don't worry. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, my God. We imagine there will be many third-party healthcare providers handling vetting, uh, whether that is getting a vaccine, taking a test, or other methods of review and approval, which could then be linked via a digital ticket so everyone entering the event is verified. Ticketmaster's goal is to pro provide enough flexibility and options that venues and fans have multiple paths to return to events. Uh, said Ticketmaster President Mark Jovic. Um, so, so Ticketmaster is also developing an app called Smart Event, which will help event ah. orga help event organizers plan social distancing at different venues. Oh boy, this this is it. it uh, I, I don't. I, it, <laughs> dystopian future? No, 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 no. Dystopian now. Dystopian no, now. No, I don't trust their vaccine for a second. I haven't gotten a flu shot, and I have never gotten, not gotten the flu. Um, my kids didn't get the flu shots, even though the doctors tried to force me to get them for them, and I'm like, no. So I've been refusing up until now, but it could come to the point, like Ticketmaster wants to do, it, you could, it could be the same for uh, jobs or shopping. Oh, yeah, all kinds of everything. It, or it, anything. You remember, you remember that? So they're pro they're trying to force us into this vaccination, this vaccine. You, you remember months ago I was talking about the COVID pass? Yep, yep. yep, that, yep. that goes right yep. along with it. Well, that's what's coming. Uh, you're, you're, everybody's going to yep. have to carry a digital COVID pass or, yep. or, or have like a chip embedded or uh, some kind of nasty shit. No ticket yeah, masters that, that not you don't paying want. for the test. T yeah. T Ticketmaster will definitely not pay for the test. <laughs> so I don't know if I, I remember this movie, and I don't know what movie it was, but in the movie, they put like a chip or something in the person, right? Right, right. And then like when they got away from the bad guys, they like took it out, cut it out of themselves. Yeah. I mean, I could see that scenario going down, dude. Oh, you sure, know what I mean? Sure, sure. Well, yeah, I, is, you know, yeah. think, think about Logan's run, you know, the guy that they all had that, had that little chip in them. And, yeah. Uh, and so they could track him with that, and they would know everything about him through that. So, yeah, anyway. I mean, I mean. Who here, who here, mm -hmm. <laughs> who here has had, had the Corona Bologna? Anybody, raise your hand if you've had Corona, because this, this, this applies to you. This applies directly to you. And, um. They can use this now if you've ever had a COVID test and tested positive for it and you disagree with basically anything they say or do or tell you to do, uh, they, they can use this to make sure that you will comply. Right. One in five COVID-19 patients develop mental illness within 90 days. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, okay. now they can also use this against Trump because he's he's a well known person that that had that had the, that had the corona. 
so they can say, well, he's obviously mentally unstable uh, because he had the corona. So anyway, so many <laughs> oh, ma- geez. Okay. Uh, uh, many COVID-19 survivors are likely to be at a greater risk of developing mental illness. Psychiatrists said on Monday, after a large study found 20% of those infected with coronavirus are diagnosed, diagnosed, yes, with a psychiatric psychiatric disorder within 90 days. So, if you don't agree with getting a vaccine, they're going to say, well, you obviously had the corona, and maybe you didn't know it, maybe you didn't get tested. You had the corona, and now you're mentally ill. So, we have to take control over over your decisions. And, uh, and you may you right. may be against the the the, uh, the vaccine, but that's because you're mentally ill. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, we've heard that one before. They've used that argument before for the flu shot. Yeah. So uh, that it, people it, that don't want the flu shot are mentally ill. Right. 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 And they're selfish. And, and, and they're you, this and that. So, it's like whatever. So if you've had the corona, uh, it says here anxiety, depression, and insomnia. You know what causes that, too? Corona! It's corona! No, lockdowns and non-socialization, for Christ's sake. Yeah, yeah, see, but that was there. Oh, no Thanksgiving! (laughs) No, fuck that! You can't have Thanksgiving. You cannot see your loved ones. Even if they're in the fucking hospital dying, you can't go see them and be with them when they fucking die. Nope, no Thanksgiving. That is draconian as fuck, dude. Forget it. No Thanksgiving, no Black Friday. No giving 2020. No no, no, no Christmas, no New no Year's. No Christmas 2020. No. no. No New Year's. So no anyway. No New Year's, no nothing. No nothing. <laughs> so, yep. so, so anxiety, depression, insomnia were the most common among, not, not the only, but amongst the most common. Okay, among, yeah. Among recovered Corona patients in the study who developed mental health problems. The researchers from Britain's Oxford University also found significantly higher risks of dementia. Joe, Joe, hey Joe, do you hear that? <laughs> um, people have been <laughs> people have been worried that Corona survivors will be at a greater risk of mental health problems. Uh, and our findings show this to be likely. Why? Just because they had it recovered. So they have it recovered. You'd think they'd be happy about that. You would think, right? Yeah, I got that. I got Why the, would that cause mental illness? I, it, it, it I'm cured. Whatever. It doesn't make any yeah, sense. Right. Anyway, doctors and scientists around the world urgently need to investigate the causes and identify new treatments. Electroshock, lobotomy, oh, whatever. Oh, God. They're uh, bringing that back? You know how uh, archaic and fucking barbaric that is, that practice? <laughs> yeah. Holy. Oh, my God. So, that anyway. That doesn't work, okay? That will bottomize the person. Just, just be ready. Just okay? be ready. When the vaccine is rolled, oh my God. when the vaccine is rolled out wide, if if you uh, if you if you've had this stuff and you you say I don't want that, uh, then they're going to say, well, you're mentally ill. We have to give it to you. That's 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 that's, that's the, the, the root and the core right there. Uh, you you are mentally ill, uh, and you are not <laughs> able to make decisions for yourself. Oh, great. The state the state will make decisions for you. Uh, <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, okay, so this is another story that I and this is kind of a little bit of a different direction, but it's basically along the same lines. It's just like everything is connected because it's all connected and um I was just gonna talk about this really quick. Um Okay, so in Minnesota, oh, shoot, and I don't know how, I'm sure it's like this everywhere in the country, and it's like this in Wisconsin, where you, you end up in some small town, right, mm-hmm. smaller, not a big city, right, and you get busted for doing something, right? Yes. And so you get taken to the county jail, and the county jail, the county jails in this country from the little bit of experience I've had with them, they fucking suck, dude. The, the the people that work there, the cops that work there are jerks. I mean, they don't give a fuck about you. They don't give a fuck about you. 
Okay, they're just doing their job, right? Right. Anyway, back in 2016, this girl. Oh shoot! What? Stop playing automatically. What is going on? Jen, Jen B wants to know what's a Cooney jail. County. <laughs> County jail. <laughs> anyway, there's this girl. She was back in 2016. She was 19, and she um, she got arrested for shoplifting. Okay. Right. And she's also a drug drug addict because she injured her hip in high school or something and got hooked on pain pills. So she's on opioids or whatever. Right. But while she's in this county jail, county <laughs> jail, she's going through severe withdrawal symptoms, like very severe, puking on herself, shitting herself, pissing herself, blah, 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 blah. So this goes on for, her mom saw her two days before she died. Right. And she was sick as fuck. And they, her mom wanted her to get medical help, you know. Right. Well, they didn't do it, and they, you know, they had like a cot in there for the bed. Right. Well, they were showing her on the floor on her 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 bedding's on the floor. She's laying on the floor right by the metal toilet. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And she's puking. You know, and it's on camera because they have a camera. They moved her to this this one where it's on camera twenty four seven. Okay. And they show them checking on her, but they just look through the window of the door. They don't like go in there. Look at her, check her, you know what I mean? Right. And she died. Yeah. So now they're suing, which they should. But if you guys have a chance to watch this, it's it's gut-wrenching, okay? Sure. And this should just not happen to people at all. And what, I, these county jails are... They don't train those people, those deputies that work there, because the people that work there are cops, okay? Right. But the, they're like the low end of the totem pole. Like, they don't do any arresting or any of, you know what I mean? They're basically office workers. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so they are not trained properly. I'm just saying you should not end up dead in a county jail the way she, and die the way she did. It's just gut wrenching. It, it's like if that was my child, I, I would have freaking, I don't know what I would have done. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I do. That's that's it's crazy. It, it, and what it, what, it and is, what she's what can not the do? only one. What? And what can you really do? You can't. You're at the mercy of. I mean, she's an adult. She was 19. You know. Um, and then here's another story that goes along with it and talks about three different three other different inmates. Of the county jails that all died in jail. Yeah. In Minnesota. Yeah. So it's really, it's one thing to go to prison, but like I'm saying, these small county jails in these small towns, mm -hmm. those people are not trained well enough to be jailers. I, I'm just saying, they, they, you're treated so badly, dude. Yeah. And it's it, it's not surprising that people die while in their quote unquote care, right? Exactly. I mean, a dog. I mean, not a dog. They treat them worse than a dog. Was I was, I was going to say. Right. They probably, you know, dogs get treated better at the humane society than some of these inmates get treated treated at the county jails, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not just Minnesota though, Jim. It's it's all over the country. This is a, it's a very big problem. They just don't talk about it that much until people start dying. Then they go, oh, maybe there's a problem here. And part of the problem is, and I think, you know, if you're addicted to drugs, you need a health care facility, not some jail. You know, you need to be monitored in a health care facility by doctors and nurses, not cops, Okay. Right. And they don't believe you anyway, so it doesn't matter. No, but if you're obviously addicted to drugs, they should take you to a, a care facility first. Let right. you get over the withdrawal, and then if you have to go to jail, then go to jail. You know, jail them then, you know, or sure. give them a court date or whatever. Well, but whatever. no one should die in jail over a shoplifting charge. No, no, no not at all. It's, that's ridiculous. 
Yeah, it, it's out of control. The prison and jail system in this country is so fucked up. Oh, it's it's it's, it's bad. Horrible. Like Donna saying, it happens to epileptics who are given medications they are allergic to, or have a reaction like to Stephen Johnson syndrome with skin blistering off and the mucus mem- mucus membrane. Yeah, see, they're not trained enough to even recognize if someone's an epileptic. Or you know what I'm saying? Uh, anything they, they, out of the norm, if you're out of the norm in any way. Right, right. If you're having a mental illness breakdown or something, yeah. odds are they're going to shoot you and kill you. Sure. I mean, it's so terrible. It, it, it's got Something has to change. I mean, this is beyond acceptable. Yeah. Right, anyone, Rob. I mean, if, but especially... People that are having a medical condition, the last place they need to be is a county jail. They need to be in a health care facility, like a hospital, and be given IV fluids or whatever to help them overcome the withdrawal symptoms. Because yeah. it can oh, be yeah. really bad. She she died because she swallowed her or choked on her vomit, dude. Right. <laughs> it should not have happened. No, absolutely. Obviously. No, it should not have happened. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, that's kind of a bummer, but, I mean, this is going on. It is going on. This could happen to anybody. This could happen to any one of us. At any time. Yep. Yep. Or anybody you you never know. You don't have to be doing anything wrong. Not uh, really. In order for them to to say, we're we're doing something, we're going to put you in a cage somewhere. Right. You You don't have to be doing anything at all wrong. Uh, you could just be walking to the post office or whatever, and and, and yeah. They, oh, you jaywalked. Uh, anything it doesn't matter. Out, you went outside the crosswalk. Yeah, or they could just come up and start harassing you for no reason. Yeah, it, it, you know, it was just right. Yes, uh, they uh, could. You know. Yeah. So you looked at me funny. You looked suspicious. Yeah, yeah. I didn't like the way you were walking. Right. <laughs> yeah. It, it, anything. It's ridiculous. You had a funny gait. Oh, God. Yeah. You were right. walking really fast. Or really slow. or <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, you were you were looking around as you were walking. Or, yeah. <laughs> it don't matter. It don't matter. Uh, they, they, no, they don't, they, it doesn't. Any excuse, they can come up with it. Oh, hell yeah. And use it. And put you in the lockup. Yeah. Yeah. All right, we're going to play some more music here. All right, let's do that. And uh, we will hopefully you'll enjoy these. I think you will. I'm pretty sure you will. I play good music. Just ask me. <laughs> There's a young man by the name of uh, Gary Clark Jr. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that was uh, Puddle's uh, Pity Party there uh, doing Stairway to Gilligan's Island. Uh, Led Zeppelin uh, to Gilligan's Island song. <laughs> Before that, we had uh, Yesterday's Rebel. It's a new one uh, by the O'Reillys and the Patty Hats. If you, if you like the Irish stuff, you know. Uh, and we kicked it off. Uh, that, was, that was probably more Scottish. Anyway, we kicked it off there with uh, Gary Clark Jr. covering Tom Petty's Good Enough for Tom Petty's 70th uh, birthday uh, bash. Here, I think they got the dates wrong on this because uh, there was a big crowd there at the show, and they said it was October twenty third, twenty twenty. Oh, that's not right, though. So yeah, so it's got to have been last year. Um, yeah, <laughs> on that. So uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, any, anyway, so there's some good stuff there. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Um. So the universities now, the University of Wisconsin system is going all virtual. So that means my son at Stout, his all his classes are going to be online, which they pretty much are right now anyway. Right. So that's not going to be a huge change for him. But for the parents that have K-12 through kids, the ones that have to have adult supervision, mm-hmm. one, per, one person's not going to be able to work because they're going to have to stay home with their kids. And my, You know what I mean? Because okay. school ain't open. And none of the daycares and shit are open, dude. Right. So, um, they're making people, they're forcing people to make very tough decisions. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, okay, I will quit working or will you quit working? You know? Um, 
who gets paid more? That's who needs to keep working, right? Yeah. Uh, and then and people that live in the rural, the more rural areas around here, okay, that get bussed into Eau Claire for school, like from Elk Mound. Um, some of them are farmers, dude. You know what I mean? Right. And they they don't have high speed internet out there yet. I mean, it's probably available, but they probably just haven't gotten it or whatever. Or maybe it's, it might not even be available at this point. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So that's creating a huge problem. Oh, we can just go online. That's not an answer for everybody. You know, some people are really going really to struggle with that. You know, the libraries aren't open. Right. You can't go to the city and go to the library and use their Wi-Fi or whatever, right? I would imagine not. Because they're not open. Yeah. I mean, it's a real pain in the ass for people that have kids that are in school. And then for the college kids, especially the ones living in the dorm, because the dorms aren't open, okay? They start it out thinking that they're going to be living in the dorm for school, right? Well, in Eau Claire, a week after they open the dorms, they mm -hmm. shut, they close them. They had to move out. Okay. So they had to go back home. Which is and fine. Do their online. That's fine for local kids, but... Uh... Right, but if you live far away, that yeah. is a real pain in the fucking ass. Hell yeah. I mean... <laughs> And then now you got all these people online, and so internet. The internet's been spotty all summer. Sure, sure. The internet's been shitty for months. Yeah. Oh yeah. Same thing. Everyone's here. been complaining about it. Right. That's because people, more people are working from home. More people are doing school from home. I mean, people are home not working. They're watching movies or they're watching. You know. Right. It can't. It's it's too much for it. Hey, all that porn's got to go through some tube. Yeah, people watching <laughs> porn more. I mean, like Rob said, what did he say? He said something that he thinks they're, they could kill it or something. Kill the Internet for a week. Yeah. Do you know how – Well, you said something like that, Rob, earlier in the chat. But anyway, and, and then he also said he would go nuts. I would too. Yeah, you got to have your Internet. I, I mean, I need to look at my email. I need to look at my – you know, so you do everything now through the internet, right? You know, it's yeah. like yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know how it pay bills these, these days without internet, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, do you really think there's a, a kill switch? I think there probably is for like sure personal there is. users. I, I, absolutely, there you know. Is. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, but, they, um, they, they, they'll, just, they'll just tell your ISP, you know, just shut that down. Right, yeah, they'll just say, yeah, so, shut everyone down. I'm, I'm sure there's a master switch somewhere uh, for for an entire countries, you know, but uh, all they got to do is just, just tell the major ISPs, shut them down. And, uh, you, know, yeah. they, you know, there's four or five big ones out there that, that people are on, and, and it's easy enough to, to force those people, not that they would have to force them, uh, but, uh, yeah, they, they could absolutely... Uh, and then Larry Woods was talking on the Coil Show uh, yesterday yeah. about the Wi-Fi in the schools Yeah. and how your kid, let's say you start a kid in kindergarten at five years old, mm -hmm. and they go all the way through public school through 12th grade and graduate and all that happy horse shit, but they've been exposed heavily to Wi-Fi. Oh, sure. His theory is that it causes people to become sterile. Well, that, that's one that's one of the effects, yeah. So that's not a good thing. I mean, people are like, oh, yeah, faster internet. You know, and even with the 5G thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, faster phones. Sir. Yeah, dude. They're all hyped up about it. It's like you guys don't know what you're, <laughs> you're hyped up about. It's so It could be so damaging to you. Absolutely. Your health that it is it, it's not a really a good thing necessarily, right? Well, any any amount of EMF, you know, that high and at the frequencies yep. at the frequencies of five G, it's 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 not good for you. You're basically microwaving yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And so his point was, you know, these kids go to school and they spend all this time on those buildings. You know, so basically, since my kids started kindergarten, right. You know, that was, you know, they're 20 now, so they were going to kindergarten in 2005 when they were just rolling it out. Yeah. Okay, but then eventually, once they got to high school, oh, yeah, 
there's a Wi-Fi. You know what I'm saying? Sure, sure. So, and then it's just crazy. You get, we don't think about it. Like we choose technology over common sense a lot of the time. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's because most people have no common sense. But yeah. <laughs> but you and I, Grim, are people our age, right? around our age, in our fifties or whatever or older. Um, we remember before the internet. Okay. We remember before cable TV. We remember before, before all that stuff. Hell, I was in my thirties by the time I had the internet. Right. <laughs> and it's like these kids. They're born with it's it. It's all been, they were born. It, it existed. Right. You know what I mean? They right. don't know a non-internet world. They don't know a non-technology world like we have. You know what I mean? Right. And it's just that they have no clue. So they're all for all this stuff. Sure, sure. But yeah. they haven't tested the effects of all this stuff. They don't know. They don't care. No, they don't. And then the <laughs> same with the 5G, or I mean the vaccines, the 5G, the chemtrails, the fucking vaccines. GMOs. GMOs. I mean, it's, 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 what hope is there? Is there, is there, I mean, is there any way of getting out of this room? I, I don't know. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. It's, Have we gone too far now? It's called it's called giant meteor. <laughs> <laughs> just keep just keep waiting for the giant meteor. Come on down. <laughs> yeah. I so, mean, I guess if if, I, if if the world's gonna go out, that's a good way for it to. We're we're all just be wiped out. But yeah, well, as you guys were talking earlier there in the chat about. Uh, the electrical mm-hmm. grid going down. That'll right. knock. That'll knock out ninety percent of, of the problem right there. Um, yep. Of course, uh, most people will not survive that. But you know it, that it, it's you know and uh, that. What that, do you mean they won't? They won't survive without without power. Elect, without electricity? No, no, hell yeah, no. Right. Uh, I, I'm telling you, you know, because if 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 the power grid went out, boom, uh, you immediately, of course, the initial thing is. Is you have no electricity, you have no internet, right. you have no internet, you have no cell phone, no lighting. Cell, cell phone towers can't work without that. But also, you have no water. You have no water um, <laughs> because your water pump is electric. Well, the, yeah, you, or whatever. The, yeah, the, the cent, you know, if you're getting your water from the city, which 98 percent of the people do, yep. more, right? More than that, that's right. gone. I mean, if they, if you don't have electricity. That that your your water is shut off. Uh, well, so, if you don't have electricity in the middle of winter in Wisconsin, yeah. your furnace don't come on either. Well, right, but most people have at least a fireplace or something, uh, assuming you have some wood. Um, I have a fireplace. I have no legitimate wood here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you should get a cord. Um, I should. I know. I, and, and you should do it immediately. Right after, I should, I know. Right after you fix that damn edge. That fucking car. God damn it. <laughs> Every time I turn around, you you know, isn't it like that sometimes, though? It is, yeah. You feel like you're getting, you got everything, you're like, okay, I'm good. And then the next day, um, the next day, you're... Your 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 one of your cars breaks down. <laughs> it's just like really. Now he's Come something. on now. <laughs> yeah, Moose, you want yeah, some wood? Yeah, no, I am. I know. I'm bad. I'm terrible, you guys. I am woodless. You, you want some but wood? But the neighbor, two houses down, <laughs> he lives with his girlfriend mostly. He's got like a wood pile back there. I can just take take from him. He won't care. Yeah. Well, you said you got. He, wood. He's not there anyway. Yeah, you said you said you got wood in your yard, right? Yeah, there's plenty of wood, dead but, wood in the yard. And do you have a chainsaw? And yeah, we got a little electric chainsaw thing. All right, well that's enough to cut up branches to heat your house, so you can just drag those branches into your patio there and chop them up. Oh, I got survival skills just for the sheer fact that I grew up in Minnesota and I live in Wisconsin. You have to have survival skills, or you will not make it, dude. And you know that from living in Michigan. If you don't have survival skills and you grew up in those states, you're fucked. You're going to die, dude. <laughs> You'll die. You'll freeze to death or something. Yeah, just getting a flat yeah. tire on the side of the road without the, without your survival skills. It's deadly skills, in 30 below weather. A flat yeah. tire could kill your ass, dude. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you got to know how to survive in extreme weather. Right. So, I know I'm bad for not having wood. I know. It's terrible. Okay, okay. 
I will get some wood, okay? And you okay. guys will all not be able to rag on me anymore about it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I do have some weed. <laughs> that That is a basic. <laughs> I might freeze it at, but at least I'll be high. <laughs> <laughs> weed will keep you warm. Right. <laughs> Little Norwegian wood. Isn't there it you good? Go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, Rob, God. I will. I promise. I promise. All right, let's let's cover this story over here on Zero Hedge, which came out uh, about a week ago. It's about a week old, so you know, you're probably, you probably know, some of you probably already read it. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I mean, because because you know, and and I think we've talked about it on here many times about the fact that all they're talking about is cases, 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 cases. They're not talking about the deaths. They're not talking about the hospitalizations. Although they're trying right. to bump, they're trying to bump those numbers up now too. Although it's not believable, um, uh, because they just manufacture whatever numbers they want and their tests. Well, here we go. COVID testing. We've been duped. Uh, so lost in this whole planned demic scam demic hysteria are some key considerations that, when carefully analyzed place the whole corona narrative in a highly questionable light. The, gatekeeper, right. the gatekeepers of information, uh, dissimulation, is that the right word, um, are manufacturing, yes. manufacturing consent at an alarming rate, but their fatigue is setting in and their, their masks are falling off. What better, albeit unlikely, source to go to for some much-needed illumination than... The New York Times? <laughs> uh, during during a considerably quieter time back in 2007, when the New York Times featured a very interesting expose on the molecular diagnostic testing, specifically the inadequacy of the polymerase chain reaction, the PCR test, and in a, in achieving reliable results. The most significant concern highlighted in the Times report is how the molecular tests, most notably the PCR, are highly sensitive and prone to false positives. At the center for, of this controversy was a potential outbreak in a hospital in New Hampshire uh, that provided or proved to be nothing more than ordinary respiratory diseases like the common cold. Unfortunately, the results wrought by the PCR told a different story. Thankfully, a faux epidemic was avoided, but not before thousands of workers were furloughed and given antibiotics and ultimately a vaccine and hospital beds, including some in intensive care, were taken out of commission. Eight months later, what was, uh, what was thought to be an epidemic was deemed to be a non-malicious hoax. The culprit? According to epidemiologists and scientific infectious disease specialists, too much faith in a quick and highly sensitive molecular test led them astray. At the time, such tests were coming into increasing use as maybe the only way to get a quick answer in diagnosing diseases like SARS and deciding whether an epidemic is underway. Uh, nevertheless, today, the PCR test is considered the gold standard of molecular diagnostics, most notably the diagnosis of the corona bologna. However, a closer analysis reveals that the PCR has actually been pretty spotty and that false positives abound. Thankfully, the New York Times is once again on the case. Your coronavirus test is positive. Maybe it shouldn't be, according to the New York Times reporter, somebody's name I can't pronounce. Essentially, uh, positive results are getting tossed around way too frequently. Rather, uh, they should probably be reserved for individuals with greater viral load. So how have they been doing this all this time, you ask? The PCR test amplifies genetic matter from virus in cycles. The fewer cycles required, the greater amount of virus or viral load in the sample, the more likely the patient is to be contagious. 
Unfortunately, once again, the cycle threshold has been ramped up. What happens when it's ramped up? Basically, huge numbers of people who may be carrying a relatively insignificant amount of the virus are deemed infected. However, the severity of the infection is never quantified, which essentially amounts to false positives. Their level of contagion is essentially nil. How are they determining the cycle threshold? If I didn't suspect that it was based on maximizing the amount of cases, which is really all it's about at this point in time, I would find the determination very arbitrary. Uh, more than a few of the professionals on record for the Times, uh, the Times report, appear very perplexed on this vital detail, which is essentially driving clinical diagnostics for public health and policy decision making. Considering all that's at stake and everything that hinges on positive versus negative case tallies, it's outrageous that these tests would be tweaked in a way that would inflate the positive rate totals and percentages. According to one virologist, any test with a cycle threshold above 35 is too sensitive. She went on to say, I'm shocked, shocked, that people would think that a 40 could, uh, could represent a positive. Personally, I think the, the science is just about settled on corona. Really? Really? Science has never settled on anything. Anyway, uh, uh, the conclusion, we've been duped. Yes, we have been duped, and we're being duped every day, because that's what they talk about every day, all the time. It's it's not a pandemic any longer. It is a case-demic. It's all about the cases at this point in time. Uh, so, pfft. it's and it's all nonsense. It's all absolute yep. nonsense. Yep, okay, and, and so I wanted to talk about this tonight. All right, let's hear it. Since it is winter... I mean, not officially by the calendar, but I have some snow on the ground here. You know, not a lot, but... Um, All right. Uh, the U.S. had a pandemic war game, and it didn't end well. They did a simulation, another one of those, Grim, kind of like Event 201. Mm -hmm. This was done in 2001, and it was a simulation um, of an uncontrolled disease outbreak concluded with riots in the National Guard in the streets. Does that sound familiar? Very. Okay. So Joe Biden did say in the debate the one time that we are going into a dark winter. Dark winter. And this is from... Oh, shoot. I did it again. Damn it. What? Damn it. What did you do? I muted you. I muted I, I muted the... Ugh, sorry. I'm here. It's, uh, okay, good. Anyway, <laughs> um, this is from foreignpolicy.com. This is actually dated April 1st, 2020. But on June 22nd, 2001... A group of well-known U.S. officials and a handful of senior policymakers gathered at Andrews Air Force Base in Maryland for a senior-level exercise that simulated a biological weapons attack, an outbreak of deadly smallpox on the United States, and designed by the, wait for it, Johns Hopkins Center for oh. Civilian Biodefense Strategies. Damn now called the Center for Health Security and the Washington-based Center for Strategic and International Studies, or CSIS. Right. The day-and-a-half-long dark winter simulation was conducted to gauge how senior leaders would respond to such an attack and included such high-level participants as Senator Sam Nunn, who played the president, former White House advisor David Gergen, who played the national security advisor, and the retired career diplomat, Frank Wisner, who played the Secretary of State. But Dark Winter has since become legendary in senior policymaking circles in Washington for a different reason. It has regularly been cited by its designers and participants as the clearest exhibit of the spiraling stresses, stresses and potential social collapse that could be sparked by a public health crisis. So... They've been testing all this stuff out, right? Sure. 
for a very a while. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This was 2001. They did this one. Okay. Okay. In October of 2019, they did Event 201, which is another simulation of a pandemic scenario. Right. So don't and, tell me and wh- that and wh- this was not planned. And where did they do that? Which one? The Dark Winter? No, the Event 201. Where did they do that? In the U.S. Are you sure? Oh, no. I, I, I can't remember. I don't know. There's been uh, so many. I, I believe it was in Wuhan, China. Well, it was in Wuhan, China. Okay, yeah. It was in okay, Wuhan, yeah, I think that's right. yeah. China. But this one that I just talked about was done at Andrews Air Force Base yeah. in the U.S. So they've done, uh, there's been other ones. But Joe Biden did tell you. We're going into a dark winter. And what he exactly means by that, I don't know. But they did this simulation, okay? And the, the article's there. It's very, it's it's pretty lengthy. But um, there you have it. There if you're wondering you what the it. fuck he meant by that. Yeah. That, that, this could be part of it. That's sure. all I'm saying. Oh, absolutely. I, I have no question about that. Yeah. And what does dark mean? I, I I mean, what do you mean by dark? Like no lights? Or do you mean like dark in other ways? You know, it leaves a lot for, mis- for interpretation, right? I, 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 it may have something to do with, uh, with Clyde's twindemic. Right. Well, that's what we're going into right now. Ah. Uh-huh. Well, no, but you know what? You know what I haven't heard anything about? What? The flu. Oh, no, no, no. They're saying here now, and at least here in New Mexico, they're talking about uh, several many cases of uh, people with, with the flu and uh, and the corona blona. Oh, really? See, here, we're just still on the corona shit. Okay? Oh, yeah, we, aren't, yeah, yeah, yeah. we aren't delving into flu stuff, apparently, because I haven't heard much about it in my local news, anyway. Yeah. Um, all, all it is is COVID, COVID, COVID. The, oh. No flu. The, you don't hear about it here yet. Okay, well it's coming. Your dark winter's coming. You're gonna have. Oh, wonderful! Yeah. And, and and since you've already had the corona, you're mentally ill. And um. <laughs> wow, Kate. Wow, that's a long thing. But thanks for posting that. That that's good because you can just read the the whole thing, the scenario right there. Sure. Yep, smallpox. Yep, that's what the article said that I read too. It was a, um, they used smallpox as the disease. Yeah. But, you know, um, they've, I think they've wanted to do this, like, before this year, but they waited. You know what I mean? They waited to make it so they could make it, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but they waited till 2020 for a reason. You know what I mean? Right. It just seems so planned now. Oh, absolutely. It just seems so. And when, you know, why would they do, why would they do a scenario or a test if they weren't planning on utilizing it in the future sometime? You know? uh, they, they, they war game stuff all the time, but. Oh, yeah. Uh, right. You know, so I mean, but, but a lot of these do come into play later on down the road. So, yeah, yep. Uh, election year. Yeah, they wanted it to be a very weird, you know, a, a hot topic or a hot, you know. Cause right now, the U.S. is basically like a powder keg. Sure. I I truly believe that because I watched some of this footage from D.C. And these two sides are going to fucking clash, dude. Oh, yeah. It's, it's going to happen. I, it's going to happen. Okay? I don't want it to happen. I don't want to be a part of it. I want to be neutral. Good, good. But I don't think we'll, they'll, you'll be allowed to be neutral, Graham. Uh, probably for the most part you're right. I, I'd imagine you're right. I don't think we'll be allowed to be neutral. Like, I'm not participating. They'll be like, well, no, you have to pick a side. Right. Because no. was there anybody during the Civil War that was not in it? <laughs> because it was... The North Man. versus the South, dude. Maybe if you're far, far enough west, you didn't get into it. But um, if, if you were in the, right. in the that part of the country, then yeah, obviously you were in it. But uh, 
if you were in the areas that weren't states yet. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh, I, I I think that could happen, Kate, and I hope not because I, I need Minnesota to be open. But, um, you know, if it happens, it happens. What can I, you, you know, the, 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 you know? The, the borders aren't closed in New Mexico unless you're from certain states. Which right. there's a list of I could do. Yeah, you got a really draconian thing there, Grim. If like, you like come in to visit New Mexico, you got a quarantine or something, yeah. right? Right. Ten days, right? Fourteen days. Oh my god. Fourteen days. It's not even worth it then. Two full weeks. Well, right. Wow, I that's mean, crazy. Unless you're coming here to stay, don't bother. Okay, um, yeah, don't go there and think you're going on some vacation. Right. Because you're going to be quarantined for 14 days. That'll be your vacation. Yep. Here's your hotel room. Enjoy. Oh, Kate, so Florida, too, like that is like that. Oh, for a while. Okay. Okay. Mm. Oh, it was for a while. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. So. Yeah. But I, um, I think there's other, I think, like, Michigan also has a has a, has a shit list of uh, states that, that aren't allowed to go visit there. Right. New York. New York. And see... I don't think they've done it yet in Minnesota for Minnesota and Wisconsin, especially the the western part of Wisconsin, because so many people work in western Wisconsin or live in western Wisconsin and work in the cities. Yeah. So for them to do that, that would be disastrous for those people to close right. the border between Minnesota and Wisconsin. That would not – people would not be happy. People would be losing their shit over that. Dude. Oh, certainly, yeah. Yeah, big time. But you know, you know what we're far we're not far off from though, Grim. What's checkpoints. That? Oh yeah, checkpoints. Are show coming. us your papers. Show well, us your co- your well, negative test. Show us your proof of vaccination. Right. We pull up. Show they'll, us they'll, your. They'll, yep. You know that you pull up those. Show little, us your little, scar, your little, mark. They'll scan your temperature when you pull up. You know. Yep. Yep. And if your temperature's over whatever, then. And this is freedom. Off to the camp with you. <laughs> and well, this is freedom, dude. Fuck yeah! All right, we have anyway. To unite. Anyway, we'll uh, we'll we'll talk more about the tyranny of the election. Uh, yeah. Uh, after we come back, we're gonna play some songs okay. here. Um, Let's do that. And uh, it, 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 you can't make this shit up. Ah, you know, it's just uh, it well, you know, getting it, more bizarre it, and more bizarre. It's, it's like it, it, it's insane. all been made up for a long time. We've read yeah, all the books. Yeah, and, they're just they went live with it. We, we've read the books. We've seen the movies. We've seen Star Wars, we've yeah. seen Lord of the Rings, we've you seen have Avatar. Been, you were warned, you were warned. <laughs> we've seen Utopia, <laughs> we've seen The Walking Dead, oh, all right? So many. Yeah, so we've seen the zombie movies, all right? Uh, this is the okay, uh, <laughs> I-F-I-I-S-D, what, how do you say that? IS infamous string dusters. Yeah, what? How do you? What's the? What's the? ISD. ISD. The infamous string dusters. All right, here you go. All right, awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want a new drug too, man. I just want one that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a uh, Huey Lewis in the news there for Mister Cowboy Tech a request. Uh, thanks, Cowboy. Before that, we had. Uh, now, now, I had not heard of this band before. It's called Diamond Head, uh, covering Am I Evil. Um, apparently, Diamond Head's an old uh, old band, old metal band, but I, I was unfamiliar with them. Anyway, so they put that out recently, and uh, they had a great, great cover. Uh, so, Diamond Head, check them out. Uh, and we kicked it off there for the Moose Girl, the infamous String Dusters, doing a track called He's yep. Gone. It was a Grateful Dead song. So, yep. uh Anyway, that, that link I just dumped in there, you guys talking about the pellet stoves. Those are pellet makers. You can buy yeah. pellet machines. Oh, you can buy it. Okay. Yeah, you can buy a machine make your own freaking pellets, man. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yeah, uh, but, you know, um, Jin Me was saying the newer wood boilers or outdoor wood stoves are neat. They can burn all types of wood and have gasifers. Outdoor. Gasifiers. Outdoor. Yeah. Outdoor. Yeah, outdoor. It has to be outdoor. Yeah, so that's, that's you know, surface. But, no, what what people do here, Graham, in Wisconsin, like in the North Woods, yeah. they have outdoor wood burners that heat the home. Okay. They have, like, a little shed thing outside. That's where the unit is to heat the home. All right. So you're not burning the wood in your house because that treated problems with fires and everything in the past. I, I would think so. 
<laughs> right, not, because not, when I bought my house, not just the fires, point, but but the fumes yeah. would would kill you. Right. At one point when I bought my house, you could tell they had had a wood stove downstairs because they had the kind of like a family room or whatever. Yeah. And they had tile where the, the you know, right in front of where the, and around where the thing would have sat. Right. But it was gone. They they couldn't, because insurance companies will not insure your house if you have a, down, a downstairs wood burner in your house. Or they will. You can find a company that will do it, but you're going to pay an arm and a leg for it. Yeah, I was I was wondering, you know, when uh, it's a fire hazard, big time. When, when, I, was have, get, when yeah. I was when I was getting insurance for this place, mm-hmm. um, they asked if I had fireplaces. Uh, oh yeah, they asked for fireplaces yeah. too. Yeah, I got two yeah. of them. I got two of them. What of it? Oh well, we got we got to bark that down here. We're we got to raise it up, raise, raise your premium. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. You gotta charge a little extra. <laughs> yep. I said, well, one of them is never used. It's out in the patio. Oh, well, that's all right. You still have it in the house. So you right, might. You have it. So, but, yep. Uh, you might use it. I mean, we, we, we don't know. Right. And so, even if you want, like, in, in your main floor of your house, one of those freestanding, like you have on your porch. Yeah, yeah. You have, that, that jacks up your insurance rate, too. Yeah. Remember yeah. in the 70s when they had those really cool ones that were, like, metal and, like, they were colored, really funky colors, like orange and avocado green? Oh yeah, that's Remember mine. Those? Mine is basically. Those were cool, dude. <laughs> yeah, that's what I had out there in, in the patio. Yeah, that's what you have out in your porch. Yeah, those are so yeah. cool. It's basically that uh, thing's like vintage, dude. <laughs> oh sure, sure, sure. <laughs> that when was your house built again? Seventy one, seventy two. Yep. See, <laughs> that's when the year. Yep, they put those in. It's, it's so, still... I would love to party in that porch with that <laughs> vintage fucking chimney thing. Yeah. yeah. Color is it orange, right? Yeah, it's orange, like a burnt right? orange. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> right out of the seventies, dude. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I, so much of this house is right out. I got the wood paneling going on. You oh know. yeah, I got that in my kitchen. Yeah, w- w- and, a little uh, bit. Yeah. I still, I still got still got the original carpet, which is crap, but right, it's like shag carpet. Right? Yeah, shag orangeish <laughs> kind of. Thing. <laughs> Yeah, oh my god, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, oh my god. It's definitely like a uh, Brady Bunch style house. That's so hilarious. <laughs> oh my god, I can just imagine it. Yeah. I would freak out in that porch. I'd be like, I feel like I'm walking back in time. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, but I mean, you can still put those in, those freestanding things. Sure. They but still sell. in place of like an actual chimney built in. But your insurance going to go up from that. Yeah, and yeah. so my fireplace is built in or whatever, built when the house is built. Well, I have, right? one, of the, I have one of those, too. In yeah, order, you do, in your living room, whatever, whatever, right? Yeah. It's, it's brick. It was a insert, yep. a Ben Franklin-type stove insert. Oh, sweet. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. nice. Two glass doors that open. Yeah, I have the glass doors on mine. Yeah. But um, it's not, I mean, and they even have a fan that blows out. Yeah, yeah I have you that, know too. What I mean? I blow, yeah, yeah. I have that, too. Yeah, I have that, too. But it does. It works, but I, we haven't had a fire in there for years, so I would need it inspected. But I, I didn't never burn pine in there, but still, you have to have it inspected the outside of it, too. Because, like, up at the top, I know there's some bricks falling off, and it's starting, you know what I mean? It's starting oh, to kind of, yeah. 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 It's old, you know. This house was built in 1949, so. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. But um, that's what people do. They have the outdoor wood burner. So you, you, you're you not going to set your house on fire, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I, mean, I mean, I guess it depends on how far outside it is. I mean, shit can happen. They have them pretty far out, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, I like um, geothermal. The, the, the concept of geothermal heating. Oh, yeah, but, I mean, you, you got, like, natural... It's not feasible if, like, you could do it easy, Grim, because you have, like, a one-story, or it doesn't even matter the, the, uh, I it mean, matters, it, like, your yard. I, but like, I, they have to dig up your whole yard to put the shit in there, you know what I, I mean? Because it's in the ground, the geothermal, you know what I mean? The but but you, have, you have to have the, you know, whatever it is, lava or something under under there to generate the heat. Lava? For geothermal. I don't know exactly how it works. All I know is that it's it's a pretty like <laughs> it's it's the most inexpensive thing that you can use for heating and cooling your home. Okay. Well maybe maybe it's called something else, but geothermal 
You're talking about like, you know, uh, Yellowstone or... No, no, no. <laughs> Something like You're that. You're thinking hot springs. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's... Uh... No. Yeah. No, no. That, that feels no, weird. no, no. Like, I, I got oh. radiant heat here, too, but I don't use it. Okay. It's, uh, I, this I have was a, an article. That, that was the old the old heater that I guess this the woman that I bought the place from used for a long time was the radiant heat. Um, but it's in the ceiling. Uh, it's not it's not in the floor. Um, <laughs> it works great. If I, I mean I've, I've tried it a couple times, and uh, one time I had a problem with my with my uh, heater, the gas heater that that sits outside my window here. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, and and I turned on the radiant. They use the the. They but, use the but ground. It, that thing, oh, that sorry, thing yeah. uses a ton of electricity, those radiant heaters. Boy. But this isn't radiant heat. This is geothermal. Okay. And here's just, I just put an article. I mean, all right, let's see, let's like see I said, I don't, I'm not all up on it, but we'll see what there's they got, a company what they, here in Eau Claire that? that seems to be doing good. What's that picture on top? It's a big old hot spring. Yeah, but look down, scroll down. <laughs> all right. That they just use that for example. Okay, it says geothermal pumps, also known as ground source heat pumps, can heat, cool, and even supply hot water to a home home by transferring heat to or from the ground. This technology has been keep, keeping consumers comfortable for more than fifty years and can cut energy bills by sixty five percent compared to traditional HVAC units. So it's not all right. I, I, yeah, fed not... from lava, dude. That's not. I get what you're saying, but uh, yeah, it's cause not. Yeah. Something's got to be down there generating the heat. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. yeah, I'm just saying. Okay. It, you can. It. It. It's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> All right. I mean, it's kind of like with what Larry is trying to do. He's trying to. Create free energy, right? Sure, sure. With using natural and you know, non-harmful, uh, a natural and non-harmful way. Yep, that's what it is. They they take the heat in the from the ground. You got to look at the diagrams and stuff. Yeah, I, I would. Just I can't say, explain it. I, mean, I, I but you, you'll I see what I mean. I can't. They imagine. put like this grid in there. You know what I mean? In the I, ground. Yeah, but, but I can't yeah. imagine in the dead of winter how there's any heat in my ground. You got a good. It, de- they, it, it depends on where you live, the kind of system you get. There's more than one type of geothermal system. All right. But it's not geothermal. It's not hot springs. It's, that's not what. Those are called thermal hot springs or whatever. Yes, but. Yeah. All right. Anyway, cool. it, it's just interesting. I, I I just thought I'd pass it along because it's kind of like, oh yeah, JJ's saying they drill way down. Well, it says here starting at depths between six and ten meters, which is uh, eighteen to thirty feet. Right. Um, that's that's pretty far down. Yeah, there. yeah. that's pretty far down. Yeah. So, yeah. It depends cool. where you live, too. You yeah. know. I'm it, sure it says feet, it says uh, six to ten meters, so that's far far more than eighteen inches. Anyway. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah, um, it does. It's it's because the ground, even though it's like in the winter, the dead of winter here. Yeah. They always tell you how far the frost line is, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's usually like fifteen feet. You know what I mean? That's that's pretty good distance. So you down. have to go down below that, like in the world, in like Wisconsin and Minnesota. Like I didn't even think it was possible in Wisconsin. Apparently it is, but you know, because I thought, oh, how can that be a thing here because it's so fucking cold? You know what I mean? Right. So but sure. apparently it costs a lot to install, but over time you're going to save. You're paying nothing for your for your heat and your cooling. Yeah, yeah, basically. So thirty thirty thousand dollars to install it. Um, so it would take a while to to recoup those those costs. Yeah, but think about how much money you pay for heat in Wisconsin. I pay 
two thousand dollars a winter, or, or uh, probably fifteen hundred. Yeah, I don't know. My heat. my my electric goes way down in the winter, and the gas is not that much. But in the summer, you run your AC continuously for six months. Well, um, continuously, but yeah. Yeah, you do because <laughs> you have a central AC, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you're running your AC for six months. Well, that doesn't run all the time. It runs, you know, whatever. Is that expensive? Yeah, it's expensive. It's a couple hundred bucks a month for. for you pay more in the summer for cooling than you do for heat in the winter. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah. Okay, because well, of where you live. Yeah, you live in New Mexico, so. Yeah. See, it's for here. It's the opposite. <laughs> I pay more in the winter for heat than I, and I pay less in the summer for. But right now, I don't have central air. I'm just using stupid window air conditioning. But you know what I'm saying? All right. Well, that's cool. I. Uh, yeah, I don't never. I mean, I, I always can thought of, you know, you, you're, 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 that, that's a heat. I, I never thought about it. <laughs> okay. What, did you have thermal thing? Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, a, no, it's, it's like, uh, it, it, what do they call it? A sustainable or something less yeah. harmful for the environment. I don't know. Something like that. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Great. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was boring, but you know whatever. It, it, no, no, it I, talking it, about this bullshit that's going on. <laughs> you know, yeah, you gotta no, take a break that, from that. That's good. That's good. Okay, well we're, we we we'll, we'll take a break from that, but I want to cover this one story about the about the bullshit. Okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. All right. Uh, this is an article was posted up on Zero Hedge uh, about a week ago. Um, mm-hmm. Some guy Larry Korea. I don't know who he is. Uh, anyway, the article is called "Fuckery is Afoot." <laughs> uh, it goes on. I am I am more offended by how many ham or how ham-fisted, clumsy, and audacious the fraud to elect him is uh, than the idea of Joe Biden being president. So yeah, I'm uh, probably. Oh, no, they're, they're both pretty offensive to me. Um, <laughs> I think Joe Biden is a corrupt idiot. However, I think America would survive him like we've survived previous idiot administrations. That means all of them. However, uh, yeah. uh, what what is potentially fatal for America is half the populace believing that their elections are hopelessly rigged. They are, and that they that they're eternally fucked. They are, they and, are. and now, however, this shakes or how now, however, this shakes out in court. That's exactly what half of the country has got to think. People are pissed off, and rightfully so. Because before I became a novelist, I was an accountant. In auditing, you look for red flags. That's weird bits in the data that suggest something is shifty is going on. You flag those weird things so you can delve into them further. One flag doesn't necessarily mean there's fraud. Weird things happen. A few flags mean stupidity or dishonesty or incompetence. Uh, But a giant pile of red flags mean that there's bad shit going on and people should be in jail. Uh, Probably. All right. Except for in politics, where apparently all you have to do is dismiss a bunch of red flags, uh, to to dismiss a bunch of red flags, is be a Democrat and mumble something about fascist voter suppression. Then uh, you can do all sorts of blatant crime and get off. Uh, I, I've been trying to keep up with the fire hose of information about what's going on during this clusterfuck of an election. Last night I was on Facebook talking about the crazy high third world dictatorship level voter turnout levels in the deep blue areas of these swing states was very suspicious. Somebody gaslighted me about how I'd have to do better than that. So this was my quick reply, listing off the questionable bullshit I could think of of off the top of my head. Massive uh, voter turnout alone is a red flag. But as for doing better, the late night spikes that were enough to uh, enough to close all the Trump leads are a red flag. The statistically impossible breakdown of the ratios of these vote dumps is a red flag. The ratios of these dumps 
being far better than the percentage of the bluest of blue cities, even though the historical data does not match. Red flag. Uh, the, the ratios, what? oh, the ratios of these vote dumps favoring Biden more in these few battlegrounds than the ratio for the rest of the country, even the bluest of the blue. Red flag. Biden outperforming Obama among these few urban vote dumps, even though Trump picked up points in every demographic group in the rest of the country. Red flag. Poll observers being removed. Red flag. And the counters cheering as GOP observers were removed. Red flag. Uh, the, the fact that the Dem observers outnumber the GOP observers three to one Red flag and the basis of the first lawsuit filed. The electioneering at polls on video. Another red flag. Uh, the willful violation of the court order requiring the separation of ballots by type. Red flag. USPS whistleblower, USPS whistleblower reporting to the inspector general that today they were ordered to backdate ballots to yesterday. Red flag. Um, uh, the video of 2 a.m. deliveries of what appeared to be boxes of ballots with no chain of custody or other observers right before the late night miracle spikes. Red flag. Any of those things would be enough to trigger an audit in the normal world. This many flags that I'd be giggling, giggling in anticipation of catching some thieves. And it isn't that I have to do better. I'm just Gen Pop Observer, who happens to be a retired auditor with finely tuned bullshit detector. This is going to the courts. So now I want to delve into some of these some more. Well, I don't need to. Um, you, you can read it for yourself if you want to delve into any of these anymore. Uh, like I said, this is a week ago. Shit's changed. Uh, but it's it's only gotten worse for them. Yep. Um, yep. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't even mention the Dominion crap in there. Um, no. But it uh, absolutely, fuckery is afoot. Uh, oh, yeah, it and, happened. Fuckery happened for sure. Dude. And it's still happening. It's still going on. Uh, and, and, and it's deep, deep fuckery. Uh, so, I don't know, man. Uh, th anyway, there's a whole bunch of other articles up there on... Uh, uh, on Zero Hedge well, about, about this uh -huh. nastiness, Wisconsin election fraud. Oh God, so many shenanigans in Wisconsin, dude. <laughs> Not, I feel it's a, it's offensive. There, there, there's a lot of. I really, mean, it's bad. There's, there's but a lot. tomorrow's gonna be. Oh, sorry, Grim. I was just saying, there's a lot of really good articles up here on ZeroHedge.com. Oh yeah, I've, any, I've any, seen anybody. them on Twitter. That you know, um, and also on the well, lockdown nonsense. Uh, how, right, right. How, I mean. <sighs> Tomorrow is going to be a very interesting day. Um, it's getting really tense. People, the, the both sides. Um, I, I don't like to see it. I really don't. I'm a Civil War buff, so I have a really good knowledge of the history of that. And I, I forgot I was going to say earlier, um, both sides of the Civil War are funded by the same people. Okay? Yeah. They were funded by the banksters, and yeah, it's really getting tense. It's not going to be. I have a bad feeling about this um, scenario. I don't want to see this, but I just feel we're at a breaking point or something right now, or coming to a head with something right now. Yeah, yeah. And I don't like it, Grim. I didn't think. I, I, you know, we, you don't ever know what's going to happen. And we've been talking about this shit for over 12 years now, you know, the economy. I mean, I really think they want to tank the economy. I mean, I think oh, they, they, they already have for a long they're, time. They're, I mean, they've been yeah. gradually working up to doing that. They, they mean, already you have. I, I, you, you may not, everybody not, may not realize the economy right. is totally fucked mm -hmm. at this point, uh, at least for the average man, but um, mm -hmm. average man or woman, let me be inclusive. Um, <laughs> or any of those other letters, right? <laughs> man, right. Man, woman, and the seventy-three she, other she, the, the seventy-three you, other genders. Her, are you them? Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said. Uh, anyway, so yeah, it, it's all hosed up. But uh, um, yeah. Okay, I, I want to do a quick set here. 
Um, okay. And, and, and then we'll come back. I've got some other stories that are absolutely uh, not related to any of this kind of nonsense to, to cover here. Okay. Um, for mental break of uh, mental. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Getting away from that, that the uh, election nonsense, the corona nonsense, yeah. the lockdown nonsense. I've been finding myself like delving into movies or a show so I can just take a break from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah good. Get away good. from the headlines and all that, you know. Like, just take a break from it. Yeah. You know, yeah, because right. it, it gets to be too much sometimes. All right, this first song uh, is not about any of the stuff going on now, but you can yeah. apply you can apply it to now. Oh, okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs> that works then. <laughs> this is uh, Barry Maguire. See you later. <laughs> Leo, Leo Maraccioli, Governor Lips Incorporated, uh, Funky Down, Funky Down. Uh, yeah, you just put that out today, uh, Leo. <laughs> but before that, for the Moose Girl there, uh, CCR doing runs through the jungle and kicking it off there with another Cowboy Tech request, Barry McGuire, Eve of Destruction. Yeah, yeah, so it's uh, all good stuff, all good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah depending... Oh, hang on, i got to make right. one just a bit quick. Depending on what kind of equipment you use, um, you can adjust levels. Like, we use... Um, when I broadcast, I use OSB. I think Rimner mm -hmm. does too, but you can adjust the levels, dude. Yeah, yeah, the software is... Software yeah. is free. You don't have to have all this fancy equipment unless you're trying to be all really professional or something yeah. and you do a weekly, daily show. You don't need any fancy equipment or anything. Right. Seriously, what the headset I use with the microphone is twenty was twenty dollars, dude. Right. And it's OBS, not OSB, but OBS, yeah. Yeah. OBS studio, which is like online broadcasting. Yeah, I think we did just think like of it that. Quite you. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Yeah. OBS but, is yeah, great. If, if anyone's interested in doing a show, just let us know in the chat, via email, whatever, you know. Um, right. Even if you want to do just like a one-off show, you know, you got something you want to get off your chest or rent about, you know, we can, as long as it does not conflict with anything that's already scheduled, you know, which is pretty wide open right now. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Oh. Let us know. Yeah, let us know. That'd be cool. cool. It would because we're looking for new content. We're looking for, we're always looking for that for anybody that wants to get on the squawk box and and squawk rant and rave or whatever you want to talk about. Really, it can be right. anything. It doesn't really matter within reason. You know. Oh yeah, whatever, dude. You live in Michigan. You got a Uber, Uber accent, so you you got just as bad as an accent as I do, Jimmy. Seriously. <laughs> so don't be giving me this crap. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't talk like I. I mean, if I really wanted to do the accent thick, I could like be yeah, you betcha, yeah, uh huh. <laughs> but I try not to do that. <laughs> Yeah, we're we're only broadcasting at forty eight k anyway, so you, you know. right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so as yeah, you betcha, huh? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 yeah. You betcha, yeah. So as promised, I have some stories here mm -hmm. that uh, yeah. Well, they're not about any of the uh, current nonsense going on. <laughs> and we'll uh, we'll and we'll start right here, and you can answer me. Uh, well, I'm probably pretty sure I already know okay. the answer on yeah. this, but uh, you could tell me whether you fit into this category. Okay. On at New York Post, nypost.com, millions of women don't know where their own vagina is located. Okay, this is bullshit. No, <laughs> I call bullshit. How in the hell can you not know that? I don't know. Like... But apparently, this has got to be an onion or the Babylon Bee or something. No, no, it's, if you're it's a not, woman, you it, don't know where that part of your it, body is. You are seriously fucked up. It's New York Post. Yeah, well, there you go. 
What the hell, dude? Right, what so, the fuck? So here it is, ladies. It might take yeah. a, it might it might it might take a long time. Hard look in the mirror and ask, what is that? What uh, you do to see your own vagina? This is what you do. Yeah, it says and an, you take uh, one of them hand mirrors uh, listen, listen, and listen, listen, you uh, fucking uh, put it underneath your fucking legs. <laughs> damn, look at the goddamn thing. Uh, 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 Just saying. An estimated one quarter of <laughs> United States women do not know where their vagina is. Bullshit! Did you? Did they ask them where their pussy was? According to a new poll conducted by one, they poll, should have said, "Where is your pussy?" Which, which, and they would have. They would have known. So that which which found that forty six percent of ladies could not <laughs> point out the cervix, and fifty nine percent suggested a different body part when asked to identify the uterus. This has to be bullshit. This has to be Battle on B. It has to be. Un, it has to be a parody. I'm it has to be you, a fucking it's, bullshit it's not, article. Uh, only one in ten women passed the anatomy quiz. No, no, bullshit, one, bullshit. one in ten no. women passed no. the anatomy quiz, asking them to name all of the parts of the female rep rep reproductive diagram. In in Tamina, I guess a Swedish woman's health company that commissioned the study included responses from two thousand women. Uh, a spoke. <laughs> Just ask him this: Where, where are the men always trying to get to on you? <laughs> yeah, or where is your coot? Where do you pee from? It's called a vagina. And they're like, really? It's called a vagina? Oh, well, that's why I didn't know where it was. I didn't know that's what it was called. Uh, the, the fact that it was called like a pussy or something. <laughs> A critical gap in American education. The, the, the fact that nearly one in four women in the survey misidentified the vagina, and 46 could not correctly... Because they think it's called pussy or something. They don't know the technical term for it. Or they oh, don't, my God. Or, or, they, or they just couldn't do it on, on a diagram. I, I don't know. That is... Oh, what? No, but, come on now. That's just because they didn't they, know... They, they, I guarantee you... If you would have said, where is your cooch or where is your pussy, they would have known. But they, when you use a technical term, they that's bad, dude. Even if, I'm sorry, if you're a woman, you should know what that's a technical well, you should term definitely know this next, part. You should ne definitely know this next part if you're a woman. Uh, One oh part. This, this, this has to be a parody, dude. It's, it's, it's no, it's true. It's not. I, Really? This yeah. can't be true. One poll also asked women to describe the menstrual cycle and found many were confounded by the process. Uh, some described periods as detoxification, like a periodical body reset button, or something that got rid of bacteria. You, you don't oh know why. Oh my you, God. You, you don't understand why you're bleeding every month? A quarter of responses described. What the fuck? A quarter of the responses described periods more approximately as the process of a woman's body goes through to shed excess blood. Excess blood. Well, that's that is what it is. I well, mean, if you don't get pregnant, then your body sheds that because it's a long story. <laughs> Sixty-three percent. Sixty-three percent of women more accurately explained that the body is shedding its uterine lining. That oh my is, god! Okay, yeah, what, but oh my that god. is what it's doing. So um, seriously, Graham, this can't be real. Menopause was not understood, which I can understand for younger women. Menopause probably not understood. Right? No one would. Have, yeah, you don't understand. Yeah, that's for when you get older. Anyway, so so so. <laughs> I can't. No, I think I call bullshit. I, I just call bullshit. No, I'm sure I, if they. I, I I don't know where that came from, but it's, I, it's ridiculous. I, I'm sure if they did a similar uh, thing for men, they'd probably find men are just as stupid. No, about, well, about, maybe, but they men know what their fucking dick is. Dude. Well, let's hope. <laughs> they know what their penis is. <laughs> well, because you got to grab oh, on oh to it. God. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh <laughs> anyway, so I'll, okay, crap. next, next, next. That, I, I, what, what, wait, what site was that on? New York Post. Oh, right. I just oh, told you. Po oh, yeah. See, there you go. I mean, what, what? New York they, Post. I, they're almost a parody site, dude. That just can't be a real thing. <laughs> So I'll look at the How study. How do you not know I, I your don't. body? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's crazy. That's freaking wow. Okay. Okay. Next, also on the New York Post, <laughs> dog shoots man in Texas 
After, I heard about that. After after a, <laughs> after his paw gets jammed in the trigger. Yeah, I saw, oh my gosh! So, Can you imagine? So a Texas dog owner was shot by his pooch when the when the animal's paw mistakenly got. Oh, let's hope it was mistakenly. Um, <laughs> mistakenly got jammed in the trigger of the firearm. <laughs> cop said. Now, why would you not have your safety on? Anyway, right. I, I, I imagine having your pistol tucked inside your waist. Dumbass. It's tuck, tucked inside your waistband while picking up your dog. A paw gets lodged in the trigger and fires the weapon, sending a bullet into you into and through your thigh. Well, you're lucky it was your thigh instead of your dick. Um, <laughs> Seriously, uh, well that no ha- kidding. Well, a few more inches to the left, and it, you would have had no dick, dude. So that happened. Because you're a dumbass, you didn't put your safety on. That that happened in Plano, Texas. The, the Plano Great. police. The Plano Police Department said this week in a Facebook post. Police officer David Tilly said the injury was not life threatening, and the man <laughs> was able to bring himself to the hospital. Well, that's good. <laughs> Fortunately, it was just through a uh, uh, just a through and through <laughs> shot. It didn't hit any main arteries Jesus or anything. Christ. He took himself to the hospital and he's fine. <laughs> uh, the incident led authorities to remind gun owners oh, to make sure the holster protects the trigger from inadvertently uh, and discharging. Put the safety on. Put the freaking safety on. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> you stupid. Dumbass. <laughs> So uh, it's your own damn fault. That's right. You 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 deserve what you got there, buddy. Yeah, you do. You uh, you you definitely deserved your wow. And and <laughs> and, and certainly don't blame the dog. Some guns don't no. have a safety. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right, but you don't want to tuck that into your waistband either. No. <laughs> oh, oh God. God. <laughs> I don't know, Grim. I, I I feel like I'm the goddamn Twilight Zone most of the time lately. I just feel like this isn't like I gotta pinch myself or something sometimes. Like this yeah. is going on. This this is going it's like, on. Really? Okay, but I feel like I'm in the Twilight Zone, so I don't know. <laughs> you okay. know, it's crazy. You, you think that was crazy? You think those two were crazy? Yeah. Daily Mail. Oh, okay. Russian grave robber who was locked up for stealing 29 girls' corpses for his doll collection. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, this is like a geen shit. Oh, my God. Uh, He refuses to apologize to the parents as he appeals for release so he can move in with his new girlfriend. He has a girlfriend? (sighs) Apparently. Anatoly Moscow. Anatoly, Anatoly Moskovin, 53, turns the bodies of 29 girls into young girls into dolls. He refused to apologize to the girls' parents as he attended a custody hearing. Uh, and this comes amid a renewed bid to be released from a psychiatric hospital. Well, at least they got him in the right place. Um, a, a historian who he was a historian who robbed graves from of twenty nine young girls and lived lived with the with the mummified corpses, has refused to apologize to their parents. It comes as the appeals to be released from psychiatric hospital so he could go and live with his new girlfriend. You're not going to get an apology who, from a crazy motherfucker. Okay, the, the guy's the guy's a nutbag, a total nutbag. He's digging up he's he's digging up dead bodies and making them into dolls. And you got a girlfriend? All right, anybody out there that's actually looking for a girlfriend and can't find one? <laughs> <laughs> so he turned the dead children into dolls, dressing them in stockings, clothes, and knee-high boots. He applied lipstick and makeup, so makeup to their faces. There's pictures in here. There's no way this guy has a girlfriend. <laughs> Is she a corpse? What's the only kind of girlfriend he should have? Well, I, come I don't on, know. No. And, and they've got these like kind of plastic looking faces. He had put whatever, so like decoupage. Oh my God. It's something just, on. Oh. The highly educated body snatcher, an expert on cemeteries, marked the birthday of each of his dead victims in his bedroom. 
<sighs> his parents who lived who who lived in the same <laughs> flat in Russian wherever Novgorod, Novgorod uh, claimed to know nothing of his Macaul. So his parents lived in the same apartment, and they knew nothing. He had twenty nine dead freaking girls. Uh, <laughs> oh my God! Probably a JJ. I mean, these you gotta be psycho. The, the, yeah. These girls are girls. He said. <laughs> Okay, and he did not, motherfucker. He didn't yeah. know any of them. He didn't know any of them. All right, we're gonna stop there and, and do our last yep. little, our last little. I had another art article, but we don't have time for it. So okay, so we we got so this for next you. Next week we'll get to it. Maybe, maybe it's not really that important, so it doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna do the last set here. All right, we'll be back after these. Listen up, listen closely, and apply this. To the world today. Yeah. Hua, <laughs> Black Betty. <laughs> Christopher Amoroso covering Black Betty there. Uh, before that was Reina Del Cid uh, covering Van Morrison's "Stranded" for the Moose Girl. And we kicked it off with the uh, speech from V for Vendetta. Yep, yep, yep. That's um, that's good information for y'all. Anybody that uh, familiar with the film? If not, if you've never seen V for Vendetta, you definitely need to see that one. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up here today, tonight, this evening, tomorrow, whatever day yep. it is uh, on Freakers Ball. We'll be back next Friday night with yes, another another episode. Um, Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Thanks for all the newbies that tuned in tonight and joined the chat. We love you guys. Come back. We're yeah, all yeah. around here chatting. We got trivia on Sunday. We got Saturday at Dork Table. We got we got stuff. So yeah, if you like the blues, and the chat's always going. Oh, sorry. I said if you like if you like the blues, come back on Sunday at noon Eastern. Yeah, Sunday morning we got trivia. We got blues. It's kind of a good time. So yep, yep, yep. And then Hal Anthony Don't, comes on right after me. Don't be a stranger. Right. Hal Anthony on Sunday. Is that true? And then, like we said, if you have an interest in doing a show or even a one-off show, it doesn't have to be a regular scheduled thing. Just let us know. Yep. We'll give you, you a spot. You you can be stranger, but don't be a stranger. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, All right. everyone. Peace.